Did you know that 60% of a farmer's yield is based off crop nutrition, their fertility, whether what's in the ground or what they put in the ground? I'm here with Jacob and Ben, and we're going to do a little scouting today. Welcome to Advanced Crop Nutrition. I'm Sherry Cook. I am a 30-year veteran in the egg industry, and we're gonna help you learn more about your farming operations and crop nutrition. Jacob, welcome back. Thanks for being out in the field with us today. Yeah, thanks, Sherry. Yeah, my name is Jacob Gaden, uh, sales agronomist with a local co-op. Today we're at the farm uh, with one of our growers, Ben Levis. Glad to have you with us, Ben. Could you just tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, I'm Ben Levis. I farm here in southeast North Dakota. I grow corn and soybeans across about 2,300 acres. Ben, we're standing in one of your corn fields talking about advanced crop nutrition. Can you tell us a little bit more about this field? Yeah, this is one of our better fields. It's more of a sandier loam that we can really push yields on. Typical rotation, we're corn, beans on it. We have grown corn on corn. Overall, we're shooting for probably a 200 bushel average across the entire field. But like any field, there's ups and downs in it. Our more higher producing zones, we're pushing up to that 220, 230. Lower end of it, we're down all the way down to 165, 170. So you use microcentrals across all those zones? Yep, I think this particular field is a four zone field and me and Jacob put together a zone map and we do yield by zone and that's how we determine what we're putting out here. This particular field, what kind of things, what kind of challenges have you found this year so far? This field in particular, been dealing with just excessive moisture has been the main problem so far. We're middle of June, seven, eight inches of rain already on it this year, which typical year is just about a full season's worth. And a couple days ago, we just dealt with some wind. This particular cornfield, it was kind of laying it down, but I think a lot of that had in part to just the roots are not rooting down because we're, they're just spreading out. How about we go take a look at your field? For sure. So Jacob, what are we looking for today? Oh, today we're just out here kind of looking to see how the crop looks. I mean, we got a very good stand of corn out here. Just looking for any nutrient deficiencies in the leaves. These look pretty good. Um, we're just gonna dig some up, see what our root growth looks like. So we're looking at plenty of moisture this year. Yeah, so I mean, that's... what kinds of things are you, what do you think we'll see? Probably not quite as much root growth as we'd like to see at this point. We've been cool and wet which can lead us a little prone to some nutrient deficiencies early as those roots maybe aren't deep enough to go find some of those nutrients that are a little deeper down. So common to see it when we've got a lot of moisture to have those roots kind of level out, right? Yeah, this one's pretty good. We're starting to get some of those uh, crown roots to actually get down and we got a little more root mass here than we've seen in some other areas. Considering all the moisture we've had. Yeah, for sure. So if we were looking for sulfur deficiency, what would we see? Oh, I think the main thing to look for is, I mean, you're going to see a general yellowing on the top of the plant. Sulfur doesn't move in the plant, so those newest leaves are going to be yellow coming out if uh, the plant's sulfur deficient. And usually what you're going to see is some uh, yellow streaking in that top leaf, some intervenal chlorosis. Compared to if we were to see nitrogen deficiency, we'd start to see these bottom leaves turn yellow and start to die off as that plant moves the nitrogen from those old leaves into the top to keep the new growth healthy. What's our stage here? Four, one, two, three, four, five. V6, it looks like, almost a V7. Good place to be in the middle of June. Yep, yeah, no, this, this corn's coming along. Cool, well, let's go take a look at some more plants. Sounds good. As we look forward and plan for the future, we talk about crop nutrition. How do you guys put together your plan for the next season or the next growing season, and how do you work together doing that? Um, I guess it all starts, I mean, probably even before we take the soil sample when we harvest this year's crop, looking back and did we meet our yield goals that Ben and I set the fall and winter before, before we fertilized for last year. And then from there, um, seeing if our yield goals were in check and then making, taking soil samples, then making the plan for next year from there. A lot will depend on the variety. If, if we think it's a field we can get in on early, we'll push the variety. And if we can push the variety, we will for sure push the yield on it and push the fertility out in them. To push these yields to higher and higher like our goal is, we are finding that NP and K isn't doing it. Putting more urea is not doing it. There's, there's a lot more to it and all the micro essentials and all the micronutrients that come with it, those are starting to help and we can for sure see the differences over the course of the last 10 years for sure, even the last five years. Our top end yield in spots in the field have gone from 220, 230 used to be crazy. Now it's commonplace every in spots of the field to see that. Now we like to see 250, 260. And to hit those kinds of yields in North Dakota, it's crazy. We didn't think about that 20 years ago, yep, right? Sure. And then to be able to have a product like Mike Essentials to tie into that, it's awesome. 
Like Jacob said, the simplicity of it, the simple one product, one pass across, you can't really beat that. Makes it easy, right? It does, very. Thanks guys for being on the Advanced Crop Nutrition Show. Appreciate your time and taking a look at the field. And join us next time in our next episode as we learn more about biologicals and how they really work.